YouTube family, what's the deal? It's your boy Crispy Clean Clip for Cliff Real TV, man. Y'all already know how I'm rocking, family. Y'all know this. And today, we're going to take an interesting deep dive into the life, the journey, the trials, and the tribulations of Maryland DMV's very own Gunu, man. Yeah, Big Six Four. Y'all jump in the comment section right now and say RIP Gunu. Long live Big Six Four. Man, this is going to be a crazy story, you two family. And y'all know I don't ever say this, but today I'm going to need y'all to like and comment and subscribe and get this here video into the algorithm, man. But uh, y'all already know what y'all can do, family. Sit back, get your doobie, kick back like we for the watch a movie, man. This is where Chris Big Clean Cliff Dog or Cliff World TV. We finna get straight to it. Markel Antonio Morrow. Or shall we call him by the name that the streets know him by, that the rap gang know him by, that we all know him by? Gunu would be a DMV artist born in Maryland, but would be one of the most influential style benders coming out during that time. And today, we are finna go over his story. In a time where the rap game was practically getting taken over by Atlanta, Georgia, and the Southern State, DMV was brewing up with a talent of their own. From guys like Lil Dude, Zan Man, and Gunu, they were starting to give us an introspective look at the rap scene, and not only that, the streets of the DMV. Now, contrary to popular belief, while a lot of people may think that Baltimore is a part of the DMV, I'm just now finding out that Baltimore is not a part of the DMV. Now, when I was a kid, I watched a show named The Wire. And the whole time I was under the impression that The Wire, since it was in Baltimore, Maryland, was a part of the DMV. But unfortunately, and to my surprise, it's not. And as a matter of fact, you two family, almost everybody feels that areas immediately surrounding the DC are a part of the DMV. And this includes places like Bethsheba and Silver Spring and Moco, Arlington, Alexandria, Falls Church, and etc. Oxen Hills, Temple Hills, Suitland, Capitol Heights, Hyattsville, College Park, and etc. Now, most feel that the DMV expands beyond the areas bordering DC, including as far as Roxville, Gaithersburg, and etc., or as far as Vienna, Springfield, and etc., or as far as Upper Marlboro or Bowie. Now, some think the DMV expands to include the entirety of counties surrounding DC, plus some of the counties beyond that. And this would include all of MoCo, much of London County, all of Fairfax County, all of Prince William County, and all of Prince George's County. And just in case some of y'all been living under a rock out there, the DMV is an abbreviated short for the District of Columbia, Maryland, and Virginia. Who knew would be from Maryland? Forest Creek, Maryland to be exact. Now he was born May 14th, 1997. So he'd officially be a 90s baby, just barely making it by three years. The DMV is one of the most dangerous areas in the state. Although the White House is indeed located in Washington, DC, Washington, D.C. is the only place in America where you will find a population of black people over Trump in the population of Caucasian. And poverty, homelessness, drug addiction amongst the black community and minority areas are also the worst in the country. Gunu himself would admit that in his earlier years growing up in the DMV that he was what some might call a crash dump. Now in the hood, a crash dummy is somebody who will do something that they're instructed to do by an older gentleman from the hood or somebody in the hood with more ranks. So, for example, if I was higher ranked and I wanted some work put in that I didn't necessarily want to do myself, I'd go find one of the young homies from the hood, put that bug in his ear that that situation needed to be handled by him. And with doing so, I would offer the little homie a higher rank in his position and when it came to the gang. Now, there are other examples and definitions of a crash dummy. Now, some crash dummies act on their own. They don't care about their future. They don't think out what they're gonna do. And they just end up shooting somebody and going to prison. That's also what you would call a crash dummy. Gunu, in his younger years, was exactly that. Now, as I stated before, Gunu would be from Maryland, but not just Maryland. He'd be from Forest Creek, 
slash Regency's Point and Avenue Apartments. Now, these are very notorious hoods located in Forestville, Maryland. As a matter of fact, YouTube family, over the years, man, Forest Creek has been one of the number one active hoods in PG County, known for the dangerous gas station that you better not stop it. Now, I think Aunt Glizzy had a video talking about that gas station having more people up there than cars. But this part of Maryland that he's from, it's like, it's just like Southeast. They hang at this BP gas station. This BP gas station got more car jackets than you can catch the cops. Two. BP in Forsville. Oh my God, this gas station right here, it be more niggas right here than a go-go. Everybody right here swear they gangster like they on mad time. It's like they geeking for a body. Like you gotta get out the car with like proper hand motions and proper feet motions. You get out the wobbling anything, you bound to get shot. And everybody right here got to op. Like they don't even know what they ops look like at this gas station. You might just look like they might just be high and just say you they op just to tell they man, yeah, I shot the last nigga at the gas station. This gas station right here, they don't even sell. I don't even think I ever got gas from this gas station. I never seen nobody at the pump. It's just people. It's just nothing but people with no cars. It's more people at this gas station than cars. I swear, if this was Grand Theft Auto, this gas station got six spots still. Now, any gas station that's connected to a McDonald's in the hood, I can almost confirm that it's probably not a gas station that you want to be at, but some people didn't have the option. And in this case, this gas station connected to this McDonald's often had shootings occurring at all times. Forest Creek runs along the Hillmar Drive and are the apartment complexes, Regency Point, Avenue Apartments, the Avanti, Park, Berkshire, and Saray Square. Gunu would start to take rap serious as an avenue of a means of a way out in his teenage years, and he would start rapping with his homeboy, Lil Dude, and these two guys would put on for PG County. PG standing for Prince George County. As a matter of fact, you two family, I guess I didn't know how many rappers actually come from Prince George County. So let's go ahead and just list off a name, a list of rappers. This coming from PG. Now, number one is YBN Corday. Now, that blew me for one because I thought YBN Corday was from California. Number two would be Logic. Another one I thought was from California. Number three would be an artist named I Don't Know. He'd be also hailing from Prince George County as well. Number four would be JPEG Mafia, man. Y'all go check him out. Number five would be that girl Rico Nasty. Number six would be Young Manny, man. And Young Manny got that good wordplay, a lot of charisma. He kind of remind me of Zan Man a little bit. Number seven, of course, would be Q the Fool. Number nine being Zan Man. Number 10 being Los. The list goes on and on and on and on. For everybody who did not know, y'all go check out some of them artists that I just named that's coming up out that DMV, man. Yeah, PG County. And Gunu would be amongst those. Matter of fact, he was one of the ones to pave the way for those guys. Now, although the DMV does have its own sound, days of the go-go music had far, far passed, man. And Goon Rich, aka Gunu, had developed a style similar to Atlanta artists' Hood Rich Pablo One. In fact, the two actually linked in and became intertwined as his career started to take off. Hood Rich Pablo One would say the DMV was the first area that embraced him and his music outside of Atlanta, Georgia. So oftenly he frequented the DMV area. And when you seen Hood Rich Pablo One out there, nine times out of ten, you'll see him with Gunu or Lil Dude. Now, oftentimes, Rappers who experience popularity in their younger years before they actually become a rapper, like your local neighborhood trap star who's always fresh and fly, oftenly gets encouraged to be a rapper. And this is exactly what happened when it came down to the Maryland artist Gunu. Gunu, like many African-American minority kids growing up in the DMV around that time, fell behind academically, and he did not graduate high school. As a matter of fact, YouTube family at the tender age of 15 years old, where most kids is still writing love letters to their girlfriends and getting their mom's approval, young Gunu was outside, posted up on that block, you heard, man. 
slanging pebbles, yeah, flint stones and bony rubble. Yeah, they said that boy Guru had two for fives of that gabba dabba do and a couple lines on that Peruvian booger shook. So although he didn't graduate from high school later on, in the words of Fox Emilio, Guru was a chemist, yeah, if you had some work that's stout, then he can make that shit hard. Although Maryland and D.C. are literally five minutes apart from each other, oftentimes, You'll hear Maryland artists say they don't listen to D.C. artists, or you'll hear D.C. artists say they don't listen to Maryland artists. Now, in the case of Gunu, the statement is true, although he did get his idea for rapping and knack for rapping from this guy, Big Flock. Who at the time of the making of this video was locked up, y'all jump in the comment section and say, Free Big Flock, man, from the DMV. Yeah, I was just fooling around in the studio, just kicking it. Just like, all my brothers just like, man, you just need it. You know what I'm saying? You just need to just rap, bro. You know what I'm saying? Everybody know you already. You know what I'm saying? It's just, you need to rap, bro. It's just, so I just like, fuck it. Everybody just rap. So you start rapping that shit just caught fire like that. Like, no gimmicks, no nothing. No nothing. So basically, it was just basically, you had the street cred already that went with the rap shit. Yeah, I already had that. So what were you doing before rap? Like, how, how did you have street cred before rap? Hey, it was just like real, like being myself for real. Like, you know what I'm saying? I ain't really like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I did, a, it's, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot to it. It's a lot, it's really a lot to it for real. I Earlier on in Good News' career, he would become friends with the fashion icon and tastemaker of Atlanta, Georgia, Ian Connor, when Ian was going to a trap house that both Gunu and Ian frequented, and he overheard Gunu's music playing in the background, which led him to say, man, this is hard. Who is this guy? And he ended up being a fan of Gunu, and they ended up linking up together, and he was probably one of the first people from Atlanta, Georgia, to embrace Gunu outside of Hood Rich Pablo One. Oh, Ian Connor. Yeah. You got a big co sign from Ian Connor. Yeah, that's my boy. I mean, everybody Ian Connor that he tweets about or he he talk about or he, he listen to, they kinda of take off. Like how did you know what's up with the whole Ian Connor situation? Hey like, Ian, that's my boy, like he ain't no no like he just a regular nigga. Anybody like think Ian like a different type nigga, he ain't he a regular person, like I I fuck with Ian, that's my boy. Yeah, how did y'all, you know, how did he find out about you? He found out through me, like, going in the trap house with Sito. Like, he was really okay. going to, like, trap house with Sito for real. It was like, like, he said he walked in and he was just listening to that shit. They was just playing my shit. They was like, fuck it. He was like, damn, this shit crank. This shit hard. He was like, this shit hard. He just kept saying, this shit hard. And he was like, kept playing it back. And then he was like, fuck it. He, like, he started listening. He said he just started listening to all my shit. Fuck it, but first person I like, I started fucking with Duop Kane. Facts. Out of Atlanta, so that was the first person that started fucking with you? Nah, first person I started fucking with was uh, out of Atlanta, it was Pablo. Okay. Okay, I mean, yeah, because that's a, that's a good look, man. When you get, I noticed when you got that Ian kind of tweet, a lot of people start, you know, flocking to you. Yeah, like a couple people, like a lot of, I ain't gonna say a couple people, like yeah, a lot of people did though. Like I ain't gonna lie, yeah, that's my boy. Though. Appreciate that. Right. Man. So I mean, now you're, are you, are you officially a hood rich? Yeah, like I've been, I've, I've been hood rich. I've been money, power, respect. I just start rapping. That's all it was. I just start rapping. Right. Okay. So you just, so this ain't nothing new. Mm -mm. Okay. Unu initially was a fan of Hood Rich Pablo One. Like I told y'all earlier, Hood Rich Pablo One was oftenly frequent in the DMV area after he blew up due to the fact of them being the ones that gravitated toward him first. Well, who knew before he was even a rapper was already a member of Hood Rich Pablo One's imprint, MPR, which is an abbreviated short, for money, power, and respect. In 2018, Gunu was started to drop mixtape after mixtape. His first, first mixtape in that time being his self-entitled mixtape, Beware of the Goon. And again, in 2017, he would drop Certified Goon, and this would lead him to go on a drop in frenzy. So in 2018, he would drop Positive Goon. In 2018, again, he would drop Goon Rich Urkel. And again, he'll drop Big 6-4. 
and then the Homicide Boys featuring Lil Dude, and then again in 2018, he'll drop Goon Wick. Now, somewhere along the lines between these drop dates, Gunu and his entourage would often run into problems with other guys in the DMV. One of those guys being a guy by the name of Q the Fool, in which case, Say Cheese asked Gunu in his famous Say Cheese interview what exactly if there was a problem at all that he had with Q the Fool. In which case, Gunu will respond by he just don't rock with the dude. Now, of course, YouTube family, this would be a textbook answer given by all rappers whenever they're asked about beefs excluding the guys in chicago some reason the guys in chicago have no problem with name dropping or explaining everything in full detail but as you see here gunu took the peewee long way route and just said he don't mess with the guy before we get out of here the golden question you know you don't have to answer what's your relationship with q the fool shit i don't fuck with them niggas by the way, you know, this is this is for the fans. I mean, this is barbershop talk. You know, this ain't me being messy, but you know, this is shit that's talked about in the streets. So, this it, it wouldn't be a say cheese interview if I asked me this, man. So, you know, I just want to know, you know, the reasons why, and you know, what the streets want to know why, you know, because a lot of people want to see y'all on the on the record for real. I don't know if y'all already do, but a lot of people want to see y'all now that y'all are both for y'all. I kind of achieving things to work together. You know, what what kind of happened? That. Ain't nothing happening with it. It's just, I don't fuck with niggas. You know what I'm saying? That's all it is. I don't fuck with niggas. So nothing yeah. happened. This, ain't, this isn't about no money. This ain't about a bitch. Yeah. This ain't about the Washington Redskins. This ain't about nothing. Yeah, hell nah. So we can, I mean, so can we possibly, you know, um, expect something between y'all in the future? I mean, is it a possibility? Five percent, ninety-nine percent, hundred, a hundred percent sure you won't see me on nothing with them or nothing with him. But he would later go on Instagram and get on his Instagram live as he would proceed to this cute the fool and Fat Max and what seemed to be a back and forth with Gunu and a local media outlet coming out of the DMV. So I'm just gonna roll the clip, and then we'll come right back. Uh, that boy, they don't play with you like that. Bernardo, hey, I'm doing features for y'all until for a thousand dollars, bro. No, What's a thousand dollars, little dude? Who you spend on a thousand dollars? Hold up. I know you got some Gucci socks on. Oh, you got white socks. Uh, you trapped none of that. You trapped none of that. Ah, that's all I said. <laughs> hey, yuck, you said, said Bolio, my son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She tried to break the drink when she thinks she ain't breaking shit. I'm gone, man. I'm shit. She's bad as shit. Hey, DMV Hoods and News, bro. Hey, okay, hey bro. Hey, bro, get off my live, bro. Before I do something to you and some G shit, talking about DMV some little dude, a bitch. How you, DMV Hoods and News? You ain't coming nobody hood, hood though. You was a bitch. We in the heart of the hood. Bro, we yeah, really like, in the. Hey, bro, we in the hood right now, bro. What you saying? These weird ass niggas, we in the hood, bro. I'm saying all that, keep then talking you doing this shit. ass shit, you putting up niggas, I mean, you putting up niggas real hood beefs and all that. That's what I'm saying, my like, brother, nigga, real hot shit. shit. I don't never see, I don't even know what dogs look like. We catch DMV Hood News, bro. Right? Hey, DMV Hood News, I try to, I try to. I try to, I try to do, I try to, you know what I'm saying, I try to give you some leeway the other day, but you get on my live talking crazy. We, we. Bro, we, you know what I'm saying? We ain't. You done, bro. I try to give you some leeway. You done. You over with. You can't come around. We see my young niggas and all that. We all, my young niggas all up on your ass. And they on my live, too. So, yeah. They seen what you said, too. So, we yeah, on that. He talking about some little dude, a bitch. Or something like that. Hey, nigga, what? Hey, young nigga, what? We don't, we don't play all that shit, you know what I'm saying? Bro, them boys gon' Them boys, <laughs> young niggas gon' get up on your mind about this shit, bro. 
<laughs> nah, cause we tired of you keep playing. Hey, Esco, what's up, Esco? They go beat. Uh, you ain't got no gas, Esco, around here. They beat, man. Hey, cause, hey, Esco. They ain't no fake pain. They ain't trying to hear that shit. Damn, if you the news, you bitch. I'm gonna be on your ass. I ain't even on your ass. My young niggas gonna, gonna push up on you. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Charlie, I said, we know you down. Yeah, you out. We know you down. You know that, bro. Yeah. Look. <laughs> Dirty, tell him, man. That's all I'm saying, cause like y'all niggas just be talking on this shit. Let them young niggas bump into you, son. Young niggas bump into you. Hey, 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 the young niggas, hey. Yeah, for sure, Baltimore goon. Yeah, hey. Baltimore plucky keep calling me dumb. Dumb. Start with a plucky. <laughs> now it's said that Gunu had a whole lot of beef going on in the city of Maryland and the DMV area in general. So there was an incident where he visited Los Angeles, California with Hood Rich Pablo One. This incident I covered extensively on the Hood Rich Pablo One video, man. So if y'all want to hear more about this incident, go to the Hood Rich Pablo One interview. But to make a long story short. Gunu had some problems with some guys and they all was in LA at the same time. What ended up happening is Gunu got swarmed out. Hoodridge Pablo One jumped in and they both lost their jury. The part of the DMZ conversation or before, when I heard the story of how you fell out with a uh, goo and dude, that basically was how it was told to me is Pablo tried to basically mediate a situation <clears throat> yeah. and tried to squash some shit and it didn't work out. Yeah, what happened was, I'm gonna tell you the whole story. I wanna know, okay, boom. Okay. With me in DC, DC and DMV, the whole town loved me. You see what I'm saying? Even the people who act like they fuck Pablo this and that. At one point, y'all was some Pablo fan asking for a feature. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Facts. So even the people on your team, I know them. I know people personally. Like the people y'all talking about, I know one of them personally from the streets. And mm -hmm. you coming to get shit and me, we actually know each other. When I came to DC. Not my first time, but like my second time, we rode up here like two, three sprinter van. The your manager, you know what I'm saying? I don't even speak names, but the manager, the person you whoop the whoop, who was actually there, used to gave me goddamn business while I was in DC. Gave me a free pint of lean, goddamn hip blow, make sure you scrape right here. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So I be really knowing niggas. Fuck out of what a nigga think, so boom. When they came to DC, the whole DC loved me, but when I tried to sign the artists, you know I was signing the artists, putting niggas on, can't mm -hmm. nobody ever put me on. Like, I was told from me to me, from the niggas who I know, who really in the street, they were like, blow, you know everybody love you. He was like, only thing happened was when you signed or, or gravitated toward them, it made certain people who know they're not right or hate them or don't like them, they couldn't fuck with you no more. All of a so sudden, instead you of having the, the whole yeah. streets, now you got half of them, you got half mm. niggas who looking at you like, why you fucking with them niggas? Which me personally, I never knew. Mm. I, I never knew y'all was internet beefing with people because it wasn't no real beef to me. So if you going back and forth on a nigga on the internet saying, fuck you, oh, I'm gonna catch you, I'm gonna kill you, I didn't even know this. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So when I'm shopping and shit, you run up and catch you for that shit you were doing. I didn't even know it. I'm, when I'm walking up, I got bags in my hand from Rodeo Dior store. I'm like, what the hell's going on? Ooh, ooh, ooh. A nigga called my name, like, nah, bro. You know what I'm saying? They know me. Nah, bro. They're between me and bro. Even then, I'm not that type of nigga. Like I just told you, are you ready to? I'm always ready. Uh -huh. But it didn't escalate to that yet. So I'm walking toward it to get it ready. Like, hold on. I don't give a damn what's going on. They about three, four of y'all. Y'all look like y'all corner and look, bro. You see what I'm saying? So before I can even do that, I'm trying to talk to the nigga I do know, and some niggas hit me from behind. Mm. See what I'm saying? Which happens, bro. I ain't gonna lie, I done been in so many fights. A real resume from the streets. I done hit niggas with bricks, chairs, and put in the concrete while you on the ground. I done did dirty shit, so I took my lick and kept it moving. Mm. That's why I went up, like, I'm all right. You see what I'm saying? Because I done been through a lot of shit, so 
you can't when you go through shit, you can't always expect to be on the good end of the stick. Right. So I took it like shit. I done did shit before. I done hit niggas. I done I know that's how I fight. I hit first. So I know I done hit niggas without you being ready to get hit. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But it actually was from behind. I ain't even see it. But do you like, think was that an example of you? Basically, like trying to be the big homie in this situation, trying to squash shit in a situation nah. where if you had known the full situation, you wouldn't even tried to get involved. If I would have known the full situation, I might not even dealt with the people I mm. deal with because everybody I deal with genuine. If you say you a killer, you really shooting at niggas. If you say you a goddamn dealer, you really dealing. Mm-hmm. You might kill a nigga if you got to. That's just part of the game. You see what I'm saying? But I, don't, I never dealt with that ever. I, I'm, that's new to me. You know me, Adam. We want we couldn't even talk about no shit like this. The first podcast, like clout or right. who internet. I don't know about no fucking internet beef. So I got caught up in it. Even when, okay, boom, y'all. Sh- I forget I got jury. I ain't never had shit. Mm. They look and I do that right here, Adam. I say, damn, my shit fell. After that, I ain't like I'm not used to internet. I'm not used to all that. This real life. I was fucking with my little partner. I got snuck. My shit fell. It's just simple. So when the world be, oh, you this, you that, man, listen, man, my resume is so long and I'd be a snitch on myself to put my resume on the internet. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I'm not finna go back and forth about that. I ain't tripping. But so did that immediately end your relationship with Goon Dude? That like, did you not appreciate how they behaved in nah, that scenario what, after it happened? Or? What, what it was is not immediately. I was trying to see what was going on after it happened. And then that's what I investigated. Hmm. I said, why do you niggas jump me? What they got going on? That's what I was told. Hey, these niggas who you with been going back and forth on the net with niggas, and niggas has actually been trying to catch him, which I respect and realize. Not trying to be funny or nothing. I don't have nothing against Goon or uh, what's the name, but I'm saying that's what it was. Like, you were saying, fuck you, I'm going to kill you, or I'm going to slap your girl or your mm-hmm. mama or whatever, and the nigga was waiting to catch you. You see what I'm saying? Right. But I'm, that's not my style, Adam. Just to be real, that ain't my style. Even right now, if a nigga did that, I'd be the nigga that's trying to catch you before I'd be the nigga that's saying it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Consider yourself to be a certain kind of dude, but then all of a sudden you got crazy Twitter shit going. March 18th, 2022. Gunu, Maryland rapper shot dead at the age of 24 years old. Markel Antonio Morrow was best known for his whispery delivery and his collaborations with Lil Dude. Maryland rapper Gunu, best known for his distinctive whispery delivery and his frequent collaborations with Lil Dude has died after being shot on Friday night, March 18th in Prince George's County. Good News manager confirmed to the news, the Washington Post, stating that the rapper had died a few hours after he was transported to a hospital. Local CBS affiliate WUSA 9 spoke with Good News family following the rapper's death. I don't believe this, said Gudu's mother. Patricia Parker Morrow told the outlet, all he wanted to do was try to get his family out the hood, and he had a big heart that was bigger than his body, and when they took him, they ultimately took her. Now, Markel Antonio Morrow, a.k.a. Gunu, released his first mixtape certified goon in 2017 and followed it up with Goon Wick and Big 6-4 and Goon Rich Urkel the next year. His debut studio album, Still Serving, came out in 2019. Now, Gunu quickly found a regular collaborator in Lil Dude, and together the duo released two joint mixtapes and countless singles. The biggest of which was in 2018, his hit Homicide Boat featuring Lil Yachty. Now, Gunu also hopped on releases with Zan Man, ASAP Ant, Kavo and Kiza over the years. Now, fellow rappers and members of the Washington, D.C., Maryland, Virginia music community were posting tributes to Gunu online, including I Don't Know, ASAP Ant, Redville, BBY Goyard, and Young Manny. Now, may Allah make his grave spacious, said ASAP Ant. And he wrote this in his Instagram story that he was sick, bro. Rest up now. I don't know if y'all know out there what happened after Gunu passed away, but we got an official video from TMZ of them using his corpse inside of the club, basically for a commemoration of him. I don't know. I've never seen this done inside of the United States before. I've seen this in the Dominican Republic. I've seen this in Puerto Rico. This is my first time seeing niggas cut up like this, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and leave y'all with that. Y'all jump in the comment section and say, R.I.P. the Big Six Four, man. R.I.P. the Gunu. R.I.P. the Goon Rich, man. Y'all already know 
Whoever y'all want to hear next, jump in the comment section and let me know, man. With crispy, clean, clear for Cliff World TV, dog. I'm gone. Love you so much. Son. Staring at a picture of her youngest son, surrounded by her daughters, Patrice Parker Murrow told us about her golden child. All he wanted to do was try to get his family, his friends out the hood. He was known to everyone as Gunu, a son, brother, friend, athlete, and rapper. He had a heart bigger than his body. When they took him, they took me. Murdered just blocks away from where he was born in the neighborhood he called home. I don't believe this, y'all. I really don't. My baby gone. Patrice says Gunu was on his way to give his sister a birthday gift, but he never made it. I heard Jacob screaming that Markel got shot up the street, and my daughter just ran straight, and I couldn't move. I just was shaking really bad. My mouth started shivering really bad. I just was shaking bad. I just couldn't move for a long, long time. In the parking lot where he was shot, a memorial sits. His mother says one bullet to the back ultimately killed him. They wanted my son dead because he gave it up. They took his chain, they took his watch, he gave it up, and they still shot him in his back. Looking at his pictures, heartbroken and in shock. It was terrible, I know. Mommy know. Mommy know he was in pain, boo. Prince George's County Police say they haven't identified a suspect or suspects, or even a motive. But Patrice has a message for the killer. I forgive you. Honey bun. I ain't ride with it unless he got a hundred round drum. Hit that nigga with the drink, he gon' butt up.